Right, if you own an electric car and you found yourself out and about on the UK's major road network recently, you may have noticed some of these. Ionity charging stations. You can't really miss them because they are, well, they're massive. But before I tell you how to use one, please do pop over to electrifying.com and we'll tell you all about different electric cars. And also, get into the comments of this video and tell us about your experiences with Ionity chargers, good, bad or indifferent. We want to know. Ionity, one of the most recognised names in ultra-fast charging, currently with 18 live locations in the UK, some of which you can see listed below. And I'm here at the absolutely brilliant Baldock services just off the gorgeous A1 motorway to tell you how they work. Now, Ionity is actually a joint venture between a load of car manufacturers, BMW, Ford, Hyundai, Mercedes and VW Group, including Audi and Porsche, that is aiming to provide big power charging across Europe, although any make can use them. Ionity recently announced a 700 million euro investment, which means we'll get more charging hubs in the UK, including their own service stations, although we haven't seen concrete plans for those yet. But the extra money means that the number of Ionity high power electric vehicle charge points is due to quadruple to around 7,000 by 2025, which sounds like loads, but that's all across Europe, don't forget. But what about right now? Well, like I said, you can't really miss Ionity chargers because they're um three meters tall and from the outset it's probably worth noting the light on the top because white means it's free and purple means it's occupied so white yes purple no as far as outputs go ionity chargers are capable of up to 350 kilowatts of power now that's great if you've got a car with an 800 volt architecture which can absorb a lot of volts something like i don't know a porsche Taycan or an audi e-tron gt or something like a hyundai ionic 5 for instance. Now, don't forget that all cars can actually make use of the chargers, but it depends what onboard charging each car has to the amount of use it can make of it. Something like this MG4 Long Range, for example, can only charge at a maximum rate of 135 kilowatts DC. So it'll make good use, but not all the use of a 350 kilowatt charger. Useless bit of information, the fastest ever 10 to 80% charge I ever achieved was with a Porsche Taycan at Ionity Gretna Green. It took less than 15 minutes. And no, I wasn't eloping. There are currently five ways to pay. An RFID card from a manufacturer, through the app, through the QR code on the station, or through Shell Recharge or Octopus Electroverse. And they're pretty much the same. You pick your charger, select your method of payment, and then connect the car. So let's do that through the app. So I've got my phone, I hit the Ionity thing, it finds my location automatically and then it just says Baldock there which is where I am obviously so I tap that that gives me an idea of where I am and it says select charger now all I have to do is find out which charger I'm at in this case it says it here it's number three so you press select charger and hopefully number three will pop up as unoccupied and it is available number three tap that and it says start charging and it gives me a price so all I have to do now is connect the car and we're off. Now, it's worth being aware that because these are high output chargers, these cables can be extremely heavy. And if they've got any dust or grit on them and you lay them across the bodywork of your car, they may scratch, so be careful. But if you pull them, look, they're on extendable cables. So don't be afraid of pulling them around a bit to get them into a convenient position. Right, I've got this. Now we should be ready to charge. As an aside, through the app, you can start and stop your charge, but also navigate to the nearest chargers using your preferred route nav, check out the pictures of where you're going, look at live progress and keep a charging history and payment wallet. So again, if you use Ionity regularly, it's definitely worth downloading. And if you don't have the app, you can just scan this QR code here, which will take you straight to the website, at which point you can sort out your payment and start to charge. There you go. We're back on there. One big miss though, these chargers do not currently support contactless credit card payment, which is a bit weird. Now it is a lot easier once you've got all the major charge point providers apps on your phone, but really? Now this screen shows you some of the relevant information for your charge, so it'll give you how long you've been charging for in minutes, the amount of kilowatt hours you've put in it, and the rate at which it's currently charging. And you'll notice here we've just started this, 
and it's going up very slowly, but that's because the car that we brought here actually had quite a lot of charge. So it will charge slowly over 80%. So that's not really relevant at this point, but it is working. Handily, this little light here will tell you how much charge you have in your car. Now there is actually another way to pay or not pay, depending on how you look at it, but it's a thing called plug and charge, which is available through the manufacturers that help set up the Ionity network. Now, what that means is it's a bit like Tesla. You simply pull up, plug your car in, and it will automatically start charging and then email you the bill. It's very, very convenient, but the software isn't available on all models at the moment. So if you've got something like a Mustang Mach-E, a Mercedes EQS or a Porsche Taycan, then you can feel a little bit smug and a lot more convenient. A big plus point, seeing as it's possibly a bit more on an electric car driver's radar, is that the juice for Ionity comes from Octopus Energy, which means that Ionity promises that you're charging with 100% renewable energy. In fact, Ionity says that it'll only use electricity from wind, water, sun, and biomass. And the website is full of useful infographics like the stat that has enabled enough CO2-free motoring to travel to the moon and back 538 times so far. I've used Ionity charging points quite a lot over the past two or three years, and I have found them to be very reliable and actually quite convenient, although a little bit pricey. Saying that, a lot of charge points have put their prices up in the past year or so, so they're not that pricey anymore. They are also a bit more attractive if you happen to have a car that can accept the big charge inputs. Other than that, I quite like them. Don't forget, if you need any more info on anything to do with electric cars, then please do log on to electrifying.com and you'll have more information than you know what to do with at your fingertips. We're only just a few clicks away.